Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back. And I have with me my beloved, beautiful sister, Zia Faye. Hello, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> okay. All right, I have her here. This is a very, very serious subject matter. I have her here because I want her to share with me one of the reasons why amnesia comes down on our human consciousness when we become focused here in physical life. Her story, um, it is one that is it's very, very powerful. Uh, naturally, like anyone who really loves someone as much as we love our mother, you know, we still have our moments. My sister has been having um, a very, uh, You've had your moments, mm -hmm. and um, and that's not to say it will not continue. But I want to share this experience with, that I'm about to share with you because I know it's going to help a lot of people. And it's just one factor, one reason why amnesia is necessary for most of us when we become focused here in what we call physical life. Now. You guys know I've already done a video talking about my mother and the transition and what had happened prior to her transition and during and sometime after. And there have been many other experiences that I had. So I've gotten validation. I've always gotten validation that we are far more than flesh and bones. My sister was having a very difficult time recalling memories or dreams with me. not memories but seeing my mother in her dreams although you knew yeah. you felt her yeah. she will wake up out of her sleep yeah. with her on her mind like in the um, early morning you midday snap. you'd take a nap yeah yes. you would I would snap out out of my sleep state and, and really upset and yeah. emotional yeah. thinking about my mother and so on and so forth so I told her you were seeing her before reasons that I have to investigate, you're not retaining the memory mm -hmm. in the dream state. Because I said a long time ago, a lot of times those real life dreams when we see people who have already crossed over, they can come and they do come to us in the dream state when our guards are down. So I know my mother was visiting my sister, but she could never tie a memory to it. And now I understand why, because when my mom passed, I was blaming myself yeah. for her passing and felt like I wasn't there at the time that she passed. Right. So I was blaming she, myself so for that because I I would always go to the house to check on her. Right. And that particular day I was tired, real tired, and I said I'll go check on her tomorrow. So I went home, but not knowing that my mother had a brain stroke the day I didn't go and see her. Even if you had stopped to see her that morning, you may not have seen or, or got Maybe I felt like Maybe I would have felt like she would have been acting weird or strange. That's possible, yeah. I could have caught it right. then and there and knowing my mom was in the hospital and I didn't get the chance to say my last thoughts to her because I'm a mama's girl always have right you were carrying that guilt and that regret and so on and so forth this just happened last week mm -hmm. whenever I set the intent to find anything out I do it I can figure it out just like I seen with a one of my other first cousins who was having a really, really tough time with the passing of her mother. I went and I observed what happened between those two before my aunt went all the way over. But my cousin didn't have the conscious memory. So Mind you, I was asking when you were like, I saw mom and was like, well, why is she not coming to me? Right, right. I'm and like, I, why, what? I mean, I'm a, I'm a good soul. Why is she not coming to me? And, I don't mistreat right, nobody. Right, but I was telling her, she is coming to you. If you feel her, you sense her. You even said one time you heard her voice, but you yeah. never saw it. You never consciously. Now, this is the thing, kid. Now, listen closely, y'all. She was not consciously remembering or having the visual or the memory of the interaction. Remember what I said a long time ago that even though we come under the veil of amnesia, 
the memories of who we were and the memories of things that we do beyond this veil is veiled off, but the knowing is still intact. This is why you have people who just have talents and gifts, have a level of awareness and the abilities. They can't explain how they're doing it. They just do it. That's the knowing I'm talking about. So my sister, I was telling her, you are seeing her, but for some reason, they're blocking off the memory. Either you are, your greater self is blocking off the memory, or they are blocking off the memory. So I set the intent to jump in one of her dream timelines to see exactly what happened, and it happened last week. Now, let me describe this to you. I already explained to my sister, and it's the ending really going to bring it all together. It was as if I was just zoned in to this outdoor scene, a bright sunny day, and there was this river port. And the river was still like frozen, but it wasn't frozen like ice. It was still as if it was like a steel frame. The water was not moving at all. My mother and my sister, I'm observing now, I'm very consciously aware, I'm very lucid in this dream, but I can't affect or change anything. No one could see me, no one could hear me. So what I saw was like a granite bench facing a riverfront that was like solid, it wasn't moving, bright summer's day, my mother was sitting where my sister is. My sister was here. My mother, she had my sister like this, and she was doing this, baby, it's okay, baby. But she, her face was straight. She didn't show any expression, but her emotions was coming across, was being expressed. She was saying, baby, it's okay, mommy. Mommy here, she was doing like this, holding her. My sister was like, mom, but I don't want, she was really emotional. Said, Mom, no, I don't want you to go. And as my mother kept saying things to console her and was holding her, but she was looking straight ahead, seemingly with no emotion, no facial expression. And I remember looking at her hair. She had her hair in a short afro, and she had on like a white coat. And my sister was saying, Mom, we never got a chance to hang out. And I remember my mother saying to her, but we are hanging out and we will hang out more. I communicated that through Boo Boo, me and me, that's my nickname. And I remember consciously thinking when she said that, well, no, you didn't communicate that to me, but now I know what she was saying to her at that moment. Because remember, there is no time. Even in our dream state, time is an illusion. So when I jumped her timeline and saw that happening, it had already happened. It long since happened. My mother's way up the dimensions now. My sister was just having a really, really hard time. She was really like clinging to my mother. And so the next thing I know, my consciousness shift out like a broader frame, like you, you know, like a camera lens. You can zoom in, zoom out. So when we're in a dream state, we can zoom in, zoom out, shift our consciousness any type of way because we're not bound by the limitations of physical life. We don't have a dense physical body. So we're just consciousness that can shift and morph and it's more fluid, which is the true nature of reality, which is really fluid. So next thing I know, I zoom my consciousness to see the broader frame and my mother suddenly stood up, she took her coat off and she morphed into what she usually wear when she goes to church. She had her hair styled as when she wore a wig when she was here. So she, the wig she used to wear, the, the wig instantly showed up on her head. She was dressed and she stood up at this port. Now, now I'm seeing the water is fluid again. Next thing I know, my mother's telling my sister to stay behind and my sister's still trying to follow her. My mother literally did a nosedive and jumped in the water. When she jumped in the water, she turned into a ball of light, like a small sun. You could see her light at the top of the water stream. Then she started moving underwater like a torpedo. You could see the trail of light behind her. And then I started to open up, expand my consciousness. And what I saw ahead where she was heading in the middle of the river, 
the top of a bigger sun form than what her form was flying underwater. That's why it kind of remind you like that movie Moana. Mo, what is it, Moana? Moana. When the when the the girl was on the boat and the butterfly it was something like a um, what was that? What you call it? a big fish? And it brightened up the whole entire yeah, sea. Yeah. It lit up the right, whole entire right, sea. Right. Right. Sea. Right. To right. give people an image of Yeah, that we just kind of get an yeah. idea. So there was like a platform that was kind of spherical coming out of the water, the shape and color of the sun. But there was also a real sun coming up in the sunset as my mother got close. And what was on this platform? In the middle was this very, very melanin-rich man. I mean, he was so dark, I couldn't zoom all the way in to see. I think it was just not permitted for me to zoom in like that. But the man was really, really dark. He was shiny with a bluish hue, very, very shiny porcelain-like skin. And he had on all white. He had massive, and I mean massive dove wings. My mother was, a, she was really into angels. It doesn't matter if you believe in any angels, my mother, believed in angels. Yes, so that made perfect sense to me when the being was there with these massive wings. If I were to measure these wings by human standards, straight across, they had to be like 30 feet wide. The wings were so massive that I really felt like the vibration wave coming from it. And my mother was soaring towards it as a ball of light. And there were some other angels there with big wings, but the one that stood out was, of course, the, the male figure who was in the middle. My mother got up to the platform, and when she got to the platform, all of the wings on that platform stopped fluttering. And here's when it got really interesting. Now I'm looking at my sister. Before she jumps in, I already know she's going to jump. And I remember thinking, don't jump in that water, you can't swim. And she jumped in the water. Right when she jumped in the water, the angel that was standing in the middle of all these angels on the platform that my mother joined with, he literally leaned down and snapped his finger across the water like this. And the whole ocean just went still again. Literally like, like a frozen frame. And then that's when I woke up. Now, I told my sister that morning about this dream and I said, mama is coming to you, but when you see her, you cannot handle it. You want to be with her. So the angels, for lack of a better word, created an amnesia barrier because if she wakes up with that memory, she will be distracted by that. So when I told my sister what I saw, she woke up the reverse time that my mother's last heartbeat was, which was 321. Three. My mother passed away at 231. She woke up 321 in the AM with my mother on her mind the same morning that I had that timeline jump, so to speak. Now, when my mother was telling her that she was letting me know or conveying that we we're gonna hang out again, me jumping back in time, she was essentially letting my sister know that she was synchronized for me to have that experience to tell her last week. You see what I'm saying? It all ended up coming together. Now, when I told my sister this, she got emotional because it resonated, right? You now are looking at this very yeah, that's what I was telling you, but I need to work on this because I want to see her beyond the veil. Right. And I want to continue not, you know, when when I come back, right. to be good memories right. and get past that, you know, and stop blaming myself and let, you know, let it be right. what it is and right. not carry all that emotion and creating that blockage where I can't see her. Exactly. And when I see her on the other side, not lose and fall apart. Right. Because I am a mama's girl. That's that's just, just the way it is. Right. So, her recalling those 
visitations in her dream state would get in even more in the way of her life here. Now I'm going to tell you from a personal perspective. They have to shield a lot of stuff off from me because you know why? When I remember stuff, when sometimes I come here, I'm pissed off because I'm like, I'm done with this crazy place. I want to go back home with my family on the other side of the veil. Y'all want to know what real love is? We will not know until we go back over there. This is why yes, all of us right are really looking for love in some kind of way here because even though we, the memory is not there as to why we're all seeking to feel this void and this love, but I'm telling you, the memory of why we want this and we crave this is blocked off, but that knowing is there. It is because on the other side of the veil, there is an acceptance from our loved ones in their real pure state that is truly beyond comprehension. Now, we talk about unconditional love, and I, I coined the phrase immeasurable love. I use it all the time because I felt that. And so, even though a lot is veiled off from me when I hate coming back here or don't want to be here or I'm tired of being here, they remind me you still need to be here because you have work to do. But I'm like, I want to be with y'all. Mm -hmm. I Like, we had earth parents, but we had cosmic parents too. Like, I remember holding my father. And people my, need to my stop taking this stuff. It's crazy. It's I know, not right. crazy I mean, at all. Yeah. And, they, and, I, I, and I know people who think like yeah. that, they, they're not ready. But yeah. as people who y'all know, the people yeah. who know, you know. Like, I recall holding my, my father, my cosmic father. I remember it clear as day and not wanting to let him go. So from her human experience perspective, I can understand that from a cosmic and a human perspective, that it is very hard when you remember that. You don't want to be here anymore after you've experienced this enough. You don't. So they have, that's one of the reasons why they veil it all from the conscious mind. But I still remember enough to know that being down here it's really is hell it's, yeah. in comparison. Yeah. And, and if, if we were to remember everything, we would simply not want to be here. That's just the way it is. Now I'm going to do another video giving even more reasons why the veil and the amnesia must come down for those of us who have to be here or who is needed to be here at this time. There are other reasons, but I just want to use her story and a little bit of what I just shared with you guys to help you understand that the amnesia is not necessarily because there's some deception going on. What happens really is that there are those who know that the amnesia is a byproduct of incarnating in this matter who take advantage of that. Now that's the difference. Again, I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about this in a future video. We're running out of time. I want to thank you all so much for this time and by all means, Please, please share my videos. My videos are not showing up as recommended anymore. Even if you try to do a search in a YouTube engine and you type in Astro Who Baby, if you don't spell my name correctly, the options will not come down. So my channel, my views, everything is just not really moving because y'all know what time it is. Exactly. I ain't gotta tell you. And but those if y'all have working and blocking people who trying to do the right thing, the saying goes. Karma is a mother. What well, goes around yeah. shall come around. It may not be with you, it may be with your children, yeah, or yeah, your yeah. next generation, Keep telling them. your parents, yeah. or something one way or the other. You better start participating in this mess and do yeah. the right thing. Yeah, the, the, again, the, the ego, mm -hmm. you, when, when someone gets a so-called power or the illusion of power, you must always mm -hmm. No, and never forget that no matter how much power you think you have, there's always someone or something even more powerful. Exactly. That realization is the most humbling thing that we can accept. And then the last thought on this, and you know when people are like, well, I don't know, you know, if you don't want somebody to do that to you, then so you don't know. Don't do it to other people. Mm -hmm. So I don't dismiss so. me with that. All right, guys. As always, you are love beyond measure. Continue to question, learn, and grow! Alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>